is credited to this account, while all of their individual expenses are also made from the shared account. Each person is free to make expenses from the common account, regardless of the income contributed to it. We will now hear about Common Wallet, a live case study in its own right, and one which we as IATM members examining fair solutions should embrace. The story of the case of Common Wallet will proceed our own session where we will be examining and discussing five other different case studies. I am very happy to introduce to you Justine Maxilla, who's been invited. <laughs> invited to moderate this discussion as an activist herself, being involved in commoning projects such as SOS Green and Common Income. And Justin will join us on the stage. And with her, we assume we will have Anna Rispoli, who works on the border between artistic creation and activism, <coughs> and who is one of the founders and active participants of Common World. Take it away. Hello everyone, do you hear me? Yeah. Anna, you hear me also? Okay. Nice. So, um, I was invited by Anna to moderate this session and we see it a little bit more as a conversation between the two of us. We are both like busy with solidarity activities that focus on the re redistribution of money or wealth or resources, how you want to call it. And we are both artists. So it's, um, how do you say, we work on the grassroots of redistribution. And the landscape of redistribution models is very broad. And both or all the initiatives that we are involved in, they are more small scale. Common Wallet in particular works on a very intimate level and SOS Relief, which is an initiative by State of the Arts, which maybe I will introduce during our discussion, but we'll see what happens, um, works on um, redistribution through direct payment on the account of someone in need. So there is uh, someone who can say, I need money, and someone who says, I have money, and then we match those people and they transfer money. So it works a bit on a bigger scale, but it's also a very small initiative only for Belgium. And Anna and me, we met in another initiative, which is the Common Income. And the Common Income is a group, we are, I think, four or five people that are busy with rethinking um, maybe and coming up with another prototype that can maybe be embedded in different environments also. So that's where we met and the prototype hasn't been launched yet but money moments have been launched and we will talk about it maybe in our conversation. So how this session will go, Anna is going to give a short introduction of the common wallet in the meantime, we see it a little bit informal, so if there are questions from the audience, I don't see everyone very well, but I see most of you, you can already raise your hands and ask a question. If I will have a question during the presentation, also Anna can respond to my question, or maybe Anna has a direct question to me. So it will be, be trying to get a style of conversation in here, but we'll see how that goes. Common wallet, as I say, what is is working on an intimate <coughs> level. And I found one sentence that I thought is very intriguing, which is say, 
It's a radical economy prototype that aims at the polyamorous relationship with money. <laughs> <laughs> so on that note, I'll hand over to Anna and launch the, her presentation. Thank you very much. I really love this sentence because uh, it's, uh, I think for me it opens a lot of uh, possibility of imagination. Um, it's indeed a project that works on intimacy, as we said. And uh, so I thank you all for doing this uh, kind of suspension of disbelief uh, to create this intimate so discussion between us, even if unfortunately it can't be there with you in a, in a physical presence. Uh, but feel, feel welcome also to uh, like your last question while during the presentation. So it's uh, we try to keep it really uh, intimate and informal. So the one that has not understood is uh, more or less 10 people based in Brussels that uh, in four years now are sharing only one bank account. And, uh, how did it happen? Um, it's one of these uh, side effects uh, of a project that doesn't see the light, but then the side effects uh, is much more important. We wanted to uh, create a cooperative, and uh, this cooperative could have had a lot uh, bigger, let's say, the main uh, goal of the thing to have a common pot to produce and to provide the professional expenses. And we wanted this pot to be extremely fluid, not to uh, uh, be uh, well outside uh, at the beginning uh, to each project. So we thought that we need to exercise, and if we exercise towards this fluidity, we don't want to fall again in the fourth of the deceit and uh, mutual judgment that we see a lot in, uh, in the field. Um, so let's make an experiment on a personal level, uh, very formal. Let's have one bank account, and for three months we just share everything. And that's what we did. We went to the bank, opened a professional account, asked for 10 cards. And uh, decided a couple of principles. This principle was uh, to divide everything we were earning, to put everything uh, that was concerning the cash flow uh, into the account, and to use this account for all every expense that we need to do uh, or that we want to do. So that uh, the difference between uh, essential um, cost because the bank energy, food, and uh, the school, etc., uh, was on the same level of uh, um, non essential costs, the desire, a high heels, shoes, a holiday, or um, a very expensive books. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know anymore what people buy. <laughs> Um, after these three months, we realized that we didn't understand enough, so we wanted to prolong the experience for one year. And after this year, we decided that in fact we didn't want to open the cooperative anymore, we just wanted to focus on um, this uh, uh, tool that was uh, this uh, shared coming. Why? Because we realized during the, the journey, um, and the journey means that uh, these 10 people has also changed. Some new people enter, some people left. So there is also um, a constant evolution on, on, the, on the attempt, on the desires, on the, on the needs that are um, that projectable or something we realized that uh, our main focus was to unlearn, unlearn uh, the solitude of capitalist system, to unlearn the um, the destiny of precarity, which is uh, uh, attributing value to success or to or to failure, um, and to leave this failure and success in an extremely lonely way in a solitude. Uh, but if you, if you don't make it at the end of the month, it's your fault. If you make it, uh, it's your, you know, it's your uh, value. If you earn more or other than others, it's, uh, it's also tells something about the presumption of value. And um, I mean, it takes five minutes to make the, well, just uh, the, this very simple evaluation that uh, this condition of uh, unfairness of, uh, of pay or success and failure 
it's extremely disturbing. I feel there are so many complex factors that is not the individual uh, destiny, <laughs> the individual capacity, the individual mm, willingness uh, to do their work well. Uh, and for class, gender, uh, uh, ability or disability, fortune, luck, that has to be the, the same uh, um, good trend than a, or not. Um, so after this five minutes, a very simple evaluation of the, the symmetry of uh, unfairness of tradition. We thought that it would have been very interesting for us to experience with our own mind. Um, and to experience a new form of uh, commoning um, that was not based on, uh, uh, on a hierarchical approach, but really on a peer to peer um, system in which nobody would have uh, uh, based uh, their giving or their taking upon guilt or upon uh, a sense of superiority. Uh, um, which is not very easy to discover, but uh, we needed at least a few years to, to learn how to deal with this uh, liberation of the guilt. Uh, as money is extremely linked to guilt, it's extremely linked to solitude, and, um, and very little linked to kinship. So the, the challenge is this. Ten people try to transform money into a colony, two, and to transform uh, precarity and solitude into kinship. Um, it's as simple as such. Uh, very, well, not very um, intuitive, I would say. Uh, but in consequences, of course, uh, uh, extremely deep and they build up on, uh, on a complexity of methods, of course. So, how is it possible to question the, the patterns we need to? To apply when we, when we talk about money, when we talk about uh, earning money, um, how it's possible to uh, to, uh, to to shift uh, from uh, from the guilt uh, pattern uh, from from neutral judgment, how it's possible to uh, to shift uh, uh, the deep uh, understanding of money as uh, as a tool of scarcity, basically, or a tool that uh, reinforce the notion of scarcity um, into a tool that reinforces the notion of abundance. It doesn't mean that we earn more because we are tend together, of course, but um, uh, it's very, very different to, uh, to have uh, to round up the month eating potatoes together rather than uh, you know, eating muscles alone at the end, at the end of the month. Um, so how does it work? Uh, I explain it's very simple. You, if, in case you want to open your own common knowledge, I just get to do this. You just get to the favorite bank, uh, which is already quite challenging. Uh, once you've chosen your favorite bank, you ask for a professional account, you ask for 10 cards, um, and you start to wire the entirety of your fees into this bank account. Which means uh, not only your salary, your wages, but also unemployment benefits, family allowances, uh, the tax reimbursement. Um, and then we go to a more delicate phase, which is the gifts, um, the, the heritage, uh, the, the eventually the, the rent, uh, the, the, the rent that, you, that you get from houses that you have uh, for the. the the capitals, that are the fruits of the capitals. We will talk about this later. And then when you, you start to use this account for every, every cost that you need to do, um, with uh, this principle that we call radical trust, uh, thinking uh, um, that all the others are doing exactly the best they could do. Um, even if your account suddenly goes to zero very quickly in the middle of the month, that's exactly the best thing that could happen. Uh, so no control, um, no control, but a lot of communication. Um, for us, what 
was very important was to establish uh, a practice of uh, regular meetings. So we, we had what we call common back as to one to do. <laughs> In which uh, well, we thought it would have been important to, to just adjust on a uh, practical level how we should spend our money, what, what happened, uh, can we earn more, can we help each other, or can we consume better. But in fact, we realized that what was the most important thing of this common breakfast, uh, um, the function was to share the emotions uh, that were triggered by this uh, common. Uh, to share the fears that were um, that were arising, and with the little also to share the sense of security that uh, uh, the common wallet uh, meant for many of us. Security because um, a lot of things become possible suddenly in the economy. Um, one person can afford uh, one year of salary growth of basically getting out of the productive um, wheel. <laughs> Uh, by, by the, the support of the non others. Uh, it can happen that uh, I mean, the cash flow of an artist is extremely uneven, and to harmonize the, the different cash flow by hand is extremely practical on a practical level. Uh, you can learn a lot from others how they do, I mean, the skills are extremely different. And it's much more easy to do the administration for someone else than for yourself because of this uh, well, separation of the identity. Um, so the, the advantages became uh, um, quite clear. But the main thing of this uh, sharing and the information uh, of this uh, common breakfast was the, the emotional uh, unlearning, the emotional. Uh, process uh, that we were facing together to recognize that it is possible to, to be together. It is possible to create uh, uh, radical models of kinship that go beyond the media, I mean beyond the, the blog that we see at the other people. It is possible to, to know that uh, in the moment of precarity we are not alone and that uh, this not being the blog is the revolution. We wanted to discover within the system. It's not the only one, of course, we need to make many revolutions, but it's a small revolution that is extremely accessible. Um, you may, you may be wonder who are these people, these people, but not the uh, nine adults, uh, one child, and one half child, <laughs> in the sense that the uh, one member uh, is. Um, uh, is inside the common wallet, but uh, the partner uh, is outside the common wallet and they have a child here, which of course opened a uh, full range of negotiations and uh, understanding on how do we uh, calculate how the cost of life. Because it's the, this group of people do not live together, we do not share um, uh, the same house, we do not, uh, we do not own anything together. We only share our cash flow. Uh, this is extremely interesting to, to, to approach because we have been uh, reflecting a lot on how to expand the project, how to recognize the project, and so to involve um, the savings and uh, the heritage. So, for the moment, we share the cash flow, which is a sort of a, the present. Uh, moment, and then we have to wonder how to colonize the past, so the heritage and future, which is the savings. And we realize that this is another step, uh, as it is extremely linked to emotional um, burden as well, emotional um, <laughs> weight, especially heritage. Uh, we realize how much money and love, you know. They've been uh, linked in our society. Um, well, very interesting. But it's still going on. I think mean, we're not completely solved with the uh, I, um, I think that uh, by the diversity of the, uh, of the members of the commonwealth, I mean, some of our artists, some of our NGO, we work in our NGO, some others are uh, producers, so we have different experiences. 
um, different age, different um, professions, different way of attending work, not work. Um, I think that each of us has a uh, uh, different uh, learning, a uh, different uh, um, process through this, uh, this experience. The Commonwealth is not a project, I would say, it's really a mind experience, it's for us. For me, what was, uh, what was extremely interesting was to observe how, from a feminist um, point of view, I was extremely uh, rigid in the way that I was divided in the economy within my couple, mm, a sort of uh, um, obsessive, nerdy uh, approach to uh, justice. So counting everything and having that in the two of us that we say exactly the same thing because otherwise it would not be fair. Um, <laughs> that was my my approach to the capital economy, to the family economy. Um, we have never shared a common account with a different part. And the moment that I'm sharing now a common account with nine other people, I feel uh, how this transform from behind, from under my, from the very core of myself, the capacity of um, trusting the future. Mm -hmm. uh, we trust the future because uh, first of all we realize that the precarity is not, uh, it's extremely violent on the world, but uh, it's much less violent than that ever, if you know it in class trouble. But, uh, but the capacity of, of uh, anticipating the needs of others and also feeling that this, your own needs might be anticipated, might be taken care of, um, and to, to, to purify this not in a one on one relation, but in a sort of a circular and collective uh, relation, is extremely satisfying. So I think it's really inspiring. Um, so yeah, maybe I can. Uh, I don't want to take it too long because I think we might be here to press and show sure you have some. But um, well, I'll just to to summarize, we we try to not create rules before they are really necessary. So we we start from. Uh, Principles rather than rules. Principle, which is a uh, non patronizing uh, way of intending solidarity, so a peer to peer approach to each other, even if there is a uh, really demand of symmetries, of course. Uh, Rental trust, um, so replacing the logic of control with a logic of trust. Uh, how much satisfaction is needed? Uh, no reciprocity. That means that um, if I give more or if I take more, I'm going to have to balance this, uh, this, this, uh, this asymmetry because I think that I that these are my possibilities and these are my needs. Um, also, don't feel obliged to compensate uh, your uh, eventually scarce uh, financial contribution with uh, sort of non monetary. Contribution, so we try not to recreate uh, uh, uncontested our relationship, um, and uh, and so break uh, the direct proportionality between uh, income and spending. I don't spend the money I earn. I earn some money, and I spend what I need. Well, in general, the, the other value that uh, we add in our chart is to foster happiness. <laughs> so to, to, uh, to give each other tools to reduce anxiety, loneliness, and fear, and uh, to gain confidence. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what do you think? Shall we start from here and then see how it develops, or I can go on? No, it sounds very good. I actually had two questions for clarification. So for the experiment that you are embarked on with the Common Wallet, one is um, the precarity of the participants. How much did it differ in the beginning? Uh, I would 
say that we really a mixed group. Um, we had uh, extreme precarious uh, participants. Um, I can in the day and earning ex very, very little, like six or seven hundred euros a month. And people who I would say that are on the, on the top list of the earning uppers, but they're not, but they have a good salary, they are employees, employees and um, employees and um, who have a certain stability. So that's uh, the, the two the two extremes are those. And in between there are many other um, many other masses. Uh, uh, artists that work uh, for instance with uh, um, with um, TV artists uh, and the work especially with the uh, countries as Italy, Spain, uh, uh, who for many years had formed in many countries. Um, I would say they are also extremely precarious, even if uh, they earn a lot of money one to month and they wait for the bunch of money for a long time and we put that in an extremely precarious uh, situation. Okay, thank you. Because what I realized often is not only the giving that needs to be unlearned, but also receiving money, like taking more than you earn, also really needs to be unlearned. And I wonder, like, how long did this take? Because if we imagine future initiatives, I think this is a quite slow process. So I was wondering about like how much time does it take to unlearn, to dare to take more than one earns? Yeah, that's a, I mean, the common knowledge is a micro uh, political um, experience. Uh, and love. But of course, it's not a serial project. It's not that we don't see the rest of the reality. Mm -hmm. It's extremely osmotic towards the rest of the world and the rest of the society. So for me, I can talk personally. For me, the exercise that worked a lot was uh, to broaden up the, 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 the concept of what does it mean to give and receive. It's not that we give and receive only within the group between the 10 people, but we give and receive in terms of a societal uh, element. So if you don't give to the groups directly, but you're giving to, to, a, to a, a broader societal group, it's also part of this very complex uh, economy that we're part of. It. And this is also why um, we can start to unveil the really feeling of the of failure, of the success, and the precarity, because uh, it's not only because we need can't provide um, the, the pattern of uh, success that they are supposed to provide. Um, uh, the, the society is taking a lot from us. So there is, um, I think, this uh, um, os osmosis between a uh, uh, circular economy that is supposed to be closed, like for instance, that people share in one bank account, and the philosophy of imagining that in fact the giving and receiving is extremely broader than these 10 people, um, helps a lot to break this uh, reciprocity and, uh, and the, well, I'm the, the small accountancy or how much do you put, how much do you take. <laughs> Yeah, I think a lot has to do with the trust you build over time. And I'm, for example, now thinking in SOS Relief, it is really like a one-time transfer, but we saw, for example, that after a while people started to give more often. So giving kind of created, actually, I have more, I want to give more. This is totally speculative because we didn't run a Oh, how do you say, uh, really like a questionnaire on it, it's speculative, but I see. And then later we also developed like a golden reliever tool where people could inscribe, I give for six months an amount between 50 euros and 400 euros. And there was one person also starting with 200 euros, later on a second round of 400 euros. So I would say there was some unlearning happening. Mm -hmm. And this talking about money, I find it also very important. And you are involved in another initiative, which is a common income. Can you just uh, share a little bit about this? But the common income is a, 
first of all, is a research project. So it's really a project that is also supported by the Commission. And then um, um, we'd like to uh, map the solidarity models that uh, within these last years have been developed uh, thanks to uh, a necessity of the crisis. Um, and those of that are, have been developed because we all share the feeling that um, that, that ends the, the, the way that we, that we deal with the resources and distribution of resources. So common income, um, um, yeah, first of all, is a mapping uh, project that uh, has the ambition also of uh, coming out with a proposal of um, the distribution with the arts so to create a sort of solidarity uh, model with the arts. So we have been uh, starting by inviting uh, a variety of uh, people in, uh, that, are, that are actually in art fields to a safe space meeting, as they call them, so in moment in which we can really talk very transparently about precarity. And we have been shocked in a way by the by the, the harshness of uh, of, uh, of the reality of the uh, precarity in the art fields. How um, people have been able to survive in the last two or three years. Um, by this understanding, we we realize that the, uh, already this is an extremely important tool that we would like to offer to the so to create more moments like that, so that people can really feel um, entitled and authorized to, to be very transparent and very honest about the economic situation and about the solitude. That's also the thing that came up a lot. The perspective is to, at the end, come out with a proposal of a, of a, of a solidarity model that might be but it's not sure, might be focused around the, the problem of the housing health that we developed. Thank you. Is there any question in the audience at this moment? Yes. Uh, I want to ask you. Uh, thank you a lot, first of all. This is very inspiring. And first of all, I want to ask how, how did you arrive at this tank of doing this in the beginning? Like, what kind of past helps to arrive at this point of view? And the second question is uh, how the togetherness of these people happened? I didn't plot uh, this, uh, the choice of the ten people. I understood the second question, but not the first one. If it's maybe you could maybe repeat it for me. Maybe proposals of meditation to arrive at this point of view to be able to see yourself inside this uh, project. Like, I feel like to involve myself in that is very inspiring, but there is a lot of fear around. So, how did you arrive to the strength to make the decision to create this uh, type of project? But I think that we have been lucky because we didn't aim to get so far. We were really thinking of doing three months with an experiment and nothing really ambitious. Um, and then we got uh, trust by doing. I think this is also an important thing to not uh, um, to, to always tailor-made the experience towards what is not a brutal uh, um, radical transformation, but it's sort of an organic uh, growing into the project. Um, that's why when we uh, encounter people that we would like to, to start a common model, um, well, we try to share this tool of uh, softness in a way also, um, mutual softness. That doesn't mean to, well, not to be in charge, but uh, try to welcome the inevitable uh, Resistance that each of us has towards uh, the sharing, uh, sharing of the uh, lack. Very often, uh, your, your salary for many people is your own identity. You are your salary, you are what you earn, and that's why the, the self evaluation of the people are 
extremely uh, violent for its uh, its extremely calm. Of course, I I can do more now. It's good. Um, so how to to soften this uh, uh, correspondence of your value, your personal individual value, to your salary, or to what you earn and not earn? Um, it's uh, it has to be done with uh, soft tools. It is very extremely deeply encrypted in our psychology. Um, so how we we can do it? For us, it was uh, when I was bring into the project, uh, how did these people met? Um, it was a bit of a sort of a, a mutual uh, well, uh, resonance uh, by talking about this possibility because this project people uh, coalesce and crystallize around it. And then um, uh, some uh, well, uh, fresh members, uh, they really just asked, say, I. I have a, a personal history of uh, individualism, especially mine is the tool that in my family has been used to individualize and to, um, yeah, to individualize and to separate. I would like to have this experience in order to wonder my relationship with money and my, well, my destiny of solitude towards the um, financial system. Um, so well, I think uh, some people have uh, been motivated by that and, uh, in, in, the, in the, the possibility of the expansion of such a micro group, we try to welcome them. Of course, our approach is rather to propose uh, and to promote the possibility of creating or multiplying common wallets as, as a very interesting uh, exercise because there's not so many side effects, I would say. Um, rather than making a common wallet of 30 members. This wouldn't be very practical because, uh, as I said, one of the key tools of this radical trust is communication. Like that we meet physically once a week, that we constantly are chatting to, with each other about the situation of our bank account, but also our personal, um, personal life. Of professional life that we invite each other to our projects. And so, so there is really the construction of kinship that needs a certain intimacy of the group. So I don't think that the group could be much bigger than 15 rather than people very big. Um, so yeah, there are some factors that pop and down. I was actually wondering because I mean we don't like to talk about COVID so much anymore, but COVID was quite a Difficult time, how resilient and how helpful was a project like Common Wallet during these two years period where a lot of artists and cultural workers had inherently less work? But for us, it was extremely valuable. I mean, I have to say that we have never been so um, well economically at any COVID times because uh, uh, a lot of the um, a lot of the expenses in our life, we feel well, like traveling and um, eating outside <laughs> and being in the cups drastically. Um, but the, the important thing is that we could uh, commonalize, we could share the, the, the support grants and the support, uh, the, like, the urgency grants that only some of us were receiving uh, for a very unjust and very unfair. Uh, Approach to, uh, well, to, to state uh, uh, support. Um, and so to, to, to share these benefits was extremely important for those who did not have access to this. Um, this is one of the reasons why Commonwealth exists, of course, recognizing that it's completely aleatory that some artists are inside the system, some other are not inside the system. And the difficulty that we see, especially for young artists now, to, uh, to be recognized, to be uh, supported in, uh, in the society. But so, yeah. Okay. Okay. Basically, that also means, like, uh, if we want to prepare for the next crisis, we should start Common Wallet initiatives now, because it does take a while to, to unlearn and to trust 
it's not something that can uh, just happen in the crisis, or could you imagine a form where it could just like an emergency or urgency arrive and you can just create it in the moment? But I have a feeling that we are not the same people that two years ago, of course, not on the outside, but on the world, in general, as society. So the possibility of uh, and the, the urgency of learning new skills is more evident. I think also for the sector of I mean, this uh, Brussels meeting for IEPM, I think also based on the work of solidarity, um, or maybe based on the reflection that, uh, that the new ways are to be learned. Um, so this creates a, uh, a sort of acceleration that I have the feeling that people are much more prone to even talk about this, this uh, the, the possibility of sharing, of actually sharing things. Um, on one side, on the other side, there is a, a very strong need of trust, of mutual trust, of building a trust platform, of building a uh, self-supportive uh, um, groups. Uh, so the two well, the meetings are vectors of hope. <laughs> I think there is more possibility than uh, before. And it's definitely more necessary. Well, uh, this goes to say, I have a feeling that uh, not only because of our economic crisis, but the ecological crisis, I have a feeling that we have a few years to learn this and uh, we have to do that. Any other questions in the audience? Yes. <laughs> um, yes, well, I really find this um, idea really super nice, but it's true, you need to change your way of thinking. It, very practical question, what are you doing with the leftovers if you have uh, more money at the end of the year of the month? What, what are you doing? Are you sharing it or do you decide to, to invest together? Or what are you doing with this extra money? It's very rare. <laughs> yeah, of course. So the sort of problems is not on the top list of other problems, let's say, <laughs> for the moment. Um, but when we have uh, let's say more money, what we consider is necessary for the cash flow of the month, we put on a separate savings account. And this uh, is um, it's kind of uh, sometimes it's leveled. Like I know that I need a new pair of glasses, nothing to do with broken. I mean, there are kind of uh, anticipation. We start to learn during these early years that nothing is just on a pure intuitive base, but we need to level the needs in a few months and this and that and then the taxes for each day basically. Um, so very often we find it's leveled, and then uh, if there is still an abundance, uh, the idea was to well, have to express desires, uh, which are important desires that can be from really good uh, a trip, a big trip, and not for the three, four months, or um, you know, we need to, um, uh, need to, to do other stuff. <laughs> Um, but uh, it's clearly that there is definitely not, because we are not more a group of only artists or only art uh, professionals, it's much more mixed a group now, luckily. Uh, so we do not uh, consider using this, uh, this money for producing a piece that doesn't find a co producer. Uh, there's no professional expense, uh, it's really only pure visual art. And for example, if someone says, okay, I want to renovate my house or something like this, is this coming from the common income or from the saving account or is there a separate channel sometimes? Yes and no. I mean, uh, um, that's a bit of a delicate point I was anticipating before. We, we, we share the cash flow, but we do not share yet the um, the heritage of the savings, the personal savings, something that we have been, for one reason or the other, accumulated during years. Um, uh, for, for, well, for, for the, because this is even more asymmetrical than, uh, than the cash flow. Uh, the people that have a house, uh, the people that have two, and the people that have, that have nothing. They only have that. <laughs> 
Um, so how to, uh, to share these insights even more recently about the future. And one is, uh, as a addition to the of the life, long mutual commitment, but it's also important to keep it light, to keep the Italy that we want. Italy, Italy. We just write the end of the month to be sure that uh, all the rights are paid and we can meet the first month of the month. Um, and so, when we talk about savings, uh, houses, property becomes a bit more complicated. We need to formalize it more, basically. And we are, we are in the effort of trying to keep it as light as possible in terms of formalization. But, um, this said, uh, if you pay a mortgage, if you grow the house and you pay the mortgage, this comes from the mortgage, and also we are all paying your house. Uh, but then the property is yours. In, for instance, we are renovating uh, an apartment that we paid with uh, some other money that were coming from somewhere else, that were before the community. Um, but we are paying two houses, the expenses of two houses among the house where we live, that we are renting, and the house that we where we live. And the fact that the renovation is taking a long time is a way for the common water because the common water is paid for two houses. In a way, there is uh, always a gray zone in which the two, uh, the two, the two economies uh, mingle. Um, and this thanks to this uh, mutual trust and this very strong mutual tolerance uh, that we accept the fact that there is a mutual sacrifice that eventually will end up in uh, individual property, but there is not a contradiction per se. Mm. In a way, asymmetries are uh, acknowledged, but uh, we are not aiming of a, of a group in which everybody is exactly the same. We are aiming at the value of asymmetries or what we can also give. So what, I mean, there is also a way to, uh, um, to turn them into something that is fruitful to the group. You know. Any other questions in the audience? Yes, up there. Um, first of all, thank you. Wow, um, this is such an enticing presentation. And I couldn't help fantasizing in relation to the discussions we had this morning what it could be, because I think there's a lot to learn from your experiment project um, on a larger scale, institutional scale, what it could mean to do something like this, say, with 10 theaters in Brussels, <laughs> which is, I mean, in a way completely, um, because you have to do with funding, you have to do with governmental organizations, also um, in relation to communication about feelings that arise and would have to think about what that means, but in relation to the framing of success, in relation to, um, on a solid, solitary basis, the fear for the future, um, and these key things that you said were so transformative, I think there's a lot to learn uh, for most of us here in the audience on an institutional level from what you did on an individual personal level. Um, maybe you have some thoughts about that? And my second question is, you mentioned people came in and out. Um, I'd be curious to hear why people left this project, if you can share that. Uh, maybe answer this first, which is easier. Uh, people left uh, either because life was uh, at the moment extremely complicated on an emotional level, so they didn't have um, the, the space to dedicate uh, to the common wallet uh, because it's also an unusual uh, taking care of each other. Um, or because uh, they felt that uh, they had done the journey they wanted. So they had done the experiment of unlearning what they wanted to unlearn and they felt uh, that they had to focus on something else now. So there are two, two key reasons that I've uh, that I have understood that for sure. They will say it differently. <laughs> um, 
about the possibility of using the, the principles, I would say, of the common man, and not so, so much the practice, because the practice is very difficult to apply from a more, a very important uh, institutional level. Um, because the practice is, um, or at least, please, contradict me, that uh, our practice is, a, is based on autonomy, is based on uh, creating the cracks within the system, in a sort of a more hacker way that doesn't um, destroy anything around that's just dismantle models for ourselves. We operate within a, a very capitalistic system and we just try to unmix the, the, the sick parts of us. Um, how to uh, at this level or from an um, institutional level, first of all, in terms of uh, administration. So how do you justify the, the fluidification of the budget? This is, I'm, I'm not um, prepared enough to say how much is possible to do. Um, as an artist, I, I always hope that there is a way, at least a way to go towards that or to open a little crack. Into that, and I'm sure that there are creative ways of um, making it still legal, but well, not creating things that free people. Uh, in terms of principles, radical trust and um, non hierarchical, uh, non patronizing solidarity, I think it's too important to say that easy, easy can be, uh, can be adopted. Um, many networks that have been. Uh, uh, that have, that have, of, of which I have a little bit of experience in Europe, especially. Um, and again, my experience is just from the point of view of an artist, not from the point of view of a, of a director of a house. <laughs> uh, but I see that uh, even in principle, that it is a hand to uh, say we are all on the same place. Uh, then the rules to protect each other's space and each other's uh, capacity of, uh, of uh, well, how to influence the network are all oriented to creating a difference for those that are big givers and those that are small givers, and those who have more right to do with me more, and etc. etc. Which is totally understandable because that's exactly how the world works. But if we want to uh, challenge real things, I think we need to challenge the mechanism, challenge the principles that we need to open. So well, this modern Sikorsky, I think it would be something that would be fantastic if it uh, would be discussed in the afternoon. Novel Sikorsky would be peer-to-peer and radical solidarity, radical trust. Um, I think it's three notions that uh, in the time and the general emergency, which society is uh, plunging, um, I think it's something that uh, can, can really become tools of regeneration, tools of uh, also of energy, of uh, giving each other mutual energy, giving each other new ideas, giving each other sort of the motivation to do things and to change the way we do things. Thank you, Anna. Francisca, one more minute. Is there one last urgent question? Okay, very quick. Did you have conversations around ethics about spending and who or how, where it could be spent? <laughs> it feels like a, an odd question in an autonomous project, but it's existing within a neoliberal capitalist. You're spending your money places. Did you talk about where? Yeah. yeah, yeah, of course, that's the first, um, first year, yeah, we start to, because of course everybody has an online application of our bank account, no? so you can constantly check for so the level of the money, so just to adjust your expenditure patterns uh, over the day of the week. We have a secretary of the month, so we have a rotation figure of a secretary that uh, just uh, rings the alarm bell when the level is involved, so you have to think of it. Think about buying potatoes rather than. Um, but these are just suggestions. Mm. We, uh, we were afraid of the transparency, which is one of the important principles of the, of the project. 
you would go to a mutual judgment or mutual check to be at a party. This person is here, you call this man. Um, and in fact, you realize that it is not so much happening here. Mm, or if it is happening, uh, it's part of the learning process. Sometimes you need to face your, your, your ghost, your real dark side of the uh, I'm a nerd that wants to know exactly what the other is coming on. But because the uh, the idea is not to judge, to say as soon as you know it, you will live with that. And eventually you can have a conversation about it. I mean, it's not a, it's not a taboo, we can, uh, we can discuss it about it. It's sometimes it's also painful because we are, there's a conflict between the desire of not judging each other and the, and the needs of understanding why certain things are very important for someone else. But the moment that this person explained that there is uh, very expensive pair of shoes were important, are important, uh, that's it, the thing, I said. Because uh, that's the level of trust. If uh, they tell me this, that's it. Um, one, one side effect is, of course, that uh, in general, because we very often rely on consume to compensate frustration and loneliness, basically, uh, we waste less. I have the feeling that there is more uh, satisfaction in human relationship than in uh, consumption uh, um, uh, yeah, patterns. So we, in a way, we also learn from each other how to how to do exchange some some items. Yeah. So but we never managed for instance to do a, a, a very organized um, rationalization of expansion. We, we don't buy food together, we don't have the, this big group uh, a shop. We still cherish very much the, the, the process of learning from the difference. Thank you very much Anna. I think everyone thank you, thank you for, for your patience in this moment. I wish you a very good day for your conversation for the afternoon and for the days. Thank you. I will take your last note where you said you all started to consume less. I think this is also a very nice <laughs> empowerment for the future. Let's all just consume a bit less. And after this session now, there will be five case studies which won't only deal with money but around fair arts practices and it will be guided by Ingrid or you will take over the mic, I think, no? Yes. Thank you all. Thank you very much.